بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آل سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو نا لرن اباؤٹ بیسک جینیٹکس ہاؤ ڈفرنٹ ٹریڈس لائک ہیئر کلر اور آئی کلر یو نو فروٹ کلر ڈفرنٹ کائنڈس آف ٹریڈس اور کیریکٹرس ان اے لیونگ آرگنزم دے آر کنٹرولڈ اینڈ ہاؤ دے آر انہیریٹیڈ فرام پیرنٹس ٹو آف اسپرنگس وائی سم آف دا ٹریڈس بیکم مور ویزیبل ان اے پاپولیشن اور ان اے فیملی اینڈ ادرس are less frequent uh, in terms of their appearance uh, or inheritance in a family. Um, so what controls uh, the development of a trait or inheritance of a trait, um, generation after generation, um, for example, there is brown eye color or blue eye color, um you know blood group types um color of flowers height of plants all these are different traits uh why some of the traits are dominant uh, over others uh why some of the disease phenotypes like deafness uh is inherited in a family so we know in 21st century all these are controlled by genes uh, and genes can exist in different forms in different alternate forms of the same gene are called alleles for example the form of the gene which controls um, you know brown eye color uh, or let's say uh, form of the gene which controls height of a plant uh, which means tall plants as compared to the dwarf plants they may be different forms of the same gene gene is same but they may contain uh, the gene which contains uh, one amino acid change or so at least um, as compared to the one which con controls the tallness the dwarf one may contain some mutation that may lead to some change in amino acid how this inheritance takes place generation after generation that is what we are going to learn in today's lecture and next two lectures i'm going to use one of the detailed lecture i recorded in summer so i would like you to watch everything carefully uh, because I, i'm using this recording because this is really very nicely described for even non-experts which have not taken O-level uh, or A-level biology. Okay, so let's continue uh, with our lecture um, on genetic inheritance of different traits. If we talk about, you know, the corn color or, you know, color of uh, citrus yellow here, or strawberry colors, these are the traits which are inherited generation after generation. But then there are these kinds of traits which are within same species. For example, this is citrus, and you can see the color of uh, pulp is red and you know yellow, green, etc. All these things, all these phenotypes or traits within a, a species, they do have genetic basis. So, uh, we also briefly touched upon, you know, tallness and the dwarfness, and this is also controlled by genes. So this is what uh, we are going to start today, uh, which is called genetics. So genetics basically deals with, or we call it study of genes and inheritance of genes from parents to offsprings. And how can we actually study different traits and characters that is what is all about genetics. Uh, in genetics, we, 
learn about the inheritance of these uh, you know chromosomes genes on these chromosomes and yesterday we talked about what is actually a gene gene is basically a specific segment of dna which encodes a specific messenger rna which is translated into a protein uh, so how these chromosomes are basically packaged let's just quickly have a recap so we have a histone octamer the proteins so we have these proteins are called histones h2a h2b h3 and h4 so two molecules of each so that is called histone octamer oct octa is the eight and then 146 base pairs of DNA, they go around this 146 base pair of DNA plus histone octamer. That makes one nucleosome. And many nucleosomes join together, they are called chromatin. And you know, when chromatin is in a specific form which is completely inherited from mother cell to daughter cell that is what we call then the chromosomes so genetics basically deals with inheritance of chromosomes inheritance of genes and collectively all these chromosomes all these 46 chromosomes in human that is what we call genome okay in genetics there are two fundamental concepts which uh, we study and one is of course called the heredity uh, heredity is basically the concept which defines why we always have you know babies why cats they always have kittens or why uh, humans always have uh, babies dogs always have pups or frogs always have tadpoles okay uh, so this concept of continuity of life within a species so your future generation always look like yourself so that concept is called heredity however we also in genetics we also study variation and variation means deviation from heredity now deviation from heredity does not mean uh, you will start having mules or you will start having chimps in your family no deviation from heredity means that you still have humans will always have babies cats will always have kittens or you know uh, gorillas will always have baby gorillas but there will be variation in their family so two siblings two siblings will not look 100 percent alike there will be differences in different traits or characters for example you know certain nose shape it runs in a human family but not everybody is going to have a sharp nose someone will have you know flat nose or slightly flat nose someone will be with dark brown eyes others with black eyes someone with fair complexion uh, taller height the others uh, siblings maybe you know intermediate height or short height so this is what we call variation and remember uh, that is the strength of a geneticist that is the beauty of genetics because if we don't have variation in a species, we cannot understand the inheritance of genes. We cannot understand the inheritance of traits or characters. And also, we cannot improve uh, when we come to, uh, um, you know, dealing with genetics of crops, crop plants. Uh, a geneticist is playing with the variation existing in a crop. Variation, for example, in uh, rice plants there are taller rice plants and then shorter rice plants uh, rice plants which give you very high yield 
and rice plants which give you low yield. So what geneticists they do, they try to bring in short stature rice character or trait together with high yield. How that is made possible? Because there is this variation exist in the uh, in in the same species. So that due to this variation, you study the inheritance of a specific trait that that is easy and made possible through the process of genetics and then you can improve upon crops as well. How this variation and heredity is controlled, so heredity and uh, variation they both have fundamental uh, genetic basis so it's the genes sorry these are the genes which are responsible for either variation or heredity. In today's lecture, we are going to learn how we can understand inheritance of genes. How can we understand inheritance of a specific trait or character in a, uh, in, uh, from parents to offsprings? And we need to, before we move on, we are going to define, you know, because when we will say character or trait, so an observable feature is called character. For example, you know, a white uh, flower or flower, sorry, flower color is a character. A height of plant is a character. Uh, seed shape is a character. And then trait is a more refined form of character, which is, you know, going to, for example, if we are studying flower color, uh, then you have traits in flower color. Flower color can be white, it can be red, it can be purple, it can be, you know, whatever different colors. So traits and characters, they are basically inter interlinked. And a heritable character is the one that is passed from parents to offspring. We talked about heredity. So heredity depends upon heritability. So heritability or heritable character is the one which is passed on from parents to offspring. For example, here you can see there are carrots which are red color and the progeny of these carrots will always be red. As compared to these carrots which are yellow, the progeny of these carrots will always be yellow. Now, the color of carrot is a character and the yellow and red colors, these are traits of carrot color. And when this color is heritable from parents to offspring, that is when we will say the carrot color traits is actually, or character is heritable, okay? We can see different traits in ourselves as well. For example, we have just talked about, or we yesterday also talked about the eye color. You can see clearly two different traits, the dark brown eye color and the uh, blue eye color. Then, you know, blonde hairs versus black hairs, okay? Uh, then the height, tallness versus you know, dwarf, so tall versus dwarf, okay? And we have the eye color, the hair colors. These are different traits which are observable in your families and you're very familiar with them. Today, we are going to see how can we study them? How can we understand their inheritance? And why sometimes, uh, you know, parents, let's say there is, uh, mother is with blue eye colors and father is with black eye colors. Ma why, for example, the baby has black eyes or blue eyes? So we are going to study this uh, inheritance pattern in today's lecture. Before we go on, uh, we need to also understand another uh, 
fundamental concept, which is called, uh, because yesterday you already studied the link between genes and proteins. I believe everybody knows, you know, gene is a specific segment of DNA, which encodes specific messenger RNA, which is decoded in the form of a protein. Now, gene is indeed the fundamental unit of heredity because the, these 46 chromosomes, all the genes present on 46 chromosomes, they define heredity in humans. And similarly, if in a corn, in, in maize plant, there are 20 chromosomes here, this one, so all the genes in those chromosomes, they define the heredity of heredity as well as variation in the core. So now if genes are the fundamental unit of heredity, what is the fundamental basis of variation then? Indeed genes. Genes are the ones which are going to provide you or give you the variation in a species as well. <clears throat> Already you can see on this slide, there's a corn cob and you see seeds of different kernels of different color. Now, remember genes, they can exist in multiple different forms. And different forms of genes, they are called alleles. This is a very important concept. Alternate forms of a gene is called an allele. How we define an allele? For example, there is in a, in a predominant character in a corn plant, let's say, is this yellow color kernel. We all eat, you know, bhutta sabne khaya well. And we all have seen that, you know, predominantly it's ye yellow kernel. So the gene which gives you this color, we will draw it like this as a horizontal line. And let's say we call it gene Y from the yellow color, okay? Now we see there are other traits as well. Slightly pinkish, purplish, white okay now the gene which gives you this color instead of this one or this color instead of yellow the gene is same exactly the same gene why but we will call this let's say yellow uh, uh, sorry yellow with an aesthetic or purple gene form, form of gene, which gives you now this slightly pinkish color. You can give it, you know, Y small p. The gene which gives you white, it will be also Y, but you just name it Y with an aesthetic W. So now it's the same gene but this one is going to give you purple color, this one is going to give you pink, this one is going to give you white, and so on. So now, this is the predominantly existing Y. Y is going to be called wild type. We call this the predominant, the reference gene with what we compare, we call this wild type. What are the others? These are the alleles, alternate forms. There are some changes in this gene. It, these genes also give you messenger RNA and then the protein, but it contains some changes at nucleotide level, which must have caused some mutation in amino acid, okay? And that's why the protein is behaving differently or gene is behaving differently. Now, alternate forms of the same gene, what they have given you? They have given you variation. So alleles of genes, Y, Y 
P, Y, small p, Y, W, or on your slides, you have, let's say this is your wild type gene, which is the Y. This one, this esteric means a change in a nucleotide, a mutation. So let's say you give it name Y prime. The next one is a different nucleotide is changed. So you have Y2 prime, then another allele is with a different mutation. You call it Y3 prime and so on. So now these genes, just like, you know, here we gave them names, you can give any name of your choice. And we are soon going to see why we choose capital letters or small letters. But first it is very important you understand the alleles. What allele is, allele is, alternate form of the same gene which gives you a different slightly different protein which may vary from single amino acid to many amino acids or an allele could be you know same gene but there is let's say a premature stop codon let's say this is a nonsense mutation let, yesterday we talked about a nonsense mutation and then this protein is not being made at all and let's say it gives you white color so this allelic variation, all this is variation at the gene level, same gene existing in multiple different forms. So alternate forms of gene, they're called alleles. And allelic variation, that is going to give you variation in, or what we call heredity variation. So what we have just discussed, allelic variation, that leads to variation of proteins, and then variation in a species, okay? And how one gene gets converted into another gene? Because there must be time when the predominantly yellow form was existing on the globe. And then the new variations or variants of the same gene or alleles due to mutation, you know, they arose. So these alleles, they actually are a result of Is there a question? Intesal, please mute your mic. So Due to change in the nucleotides, yesterday we talked about mutation, changes in the nucleotides. New forms of genes or alleles of the same gene, they arise and they are the source of variation. We are not going to talk about epigenetics today. We will talk about epigenetics in uh, two lectures down. Today we are going to stick to the genetics, how we deal with or how do we analyze different alleles? How do we analyze different forms of the same gene? The pioneering work was done by uh, Gregor Mendel. Mendel was uh, and is considered the father of genetics. He was basically a monk, you might have heard, uh, but a very genius mind. Uh, he was in Austria, uh, in Vienna, I believe. And he was part of uh, Natural Science Society of the scientists. Um, and the question which the scientific society of that time was dealing was how to improve the quality of wool uh, because Austria in that time was part of Austro-Hungarian Empire in 1700 onwards or even before. And they were suffering at the hands of Spanish because Spanish were producing very high quality wool. And, you know, Spanish took over all the uh, trade uh, in, because of high quality wool they, they, they could produce. So the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire, they got together their brains and they said, okay, we have to uh, understand how can we improve the quality of wool 
which we are producing so that we can compete with uh, Spanish. Mendel, uh, you will be surprised. The question was to uh, you know, improve the quality of wool uh, and Mendel started using peat plants because nothing was known about how a trait or a character like wool uh, be improved. Nobody understood, you know, um, how can we understand, you know, the, uh, or, or how can we uh, improve the wool quality because they did not know that any factors involved in, uh, which, which were determining factors for the quality of wool. So he, uh, although people say, you know, he was Hmong and, you know, he, maybe there are many stories, but he was a very scientific mind. Um, and he used a very scientific approach and that scientific approach uh, with the help of modeling and predictions using some uh, common math, uh, simple math, he became very successful. So let's see uh, what he did. He used uh, in a uh, living organism, he chose pea plants. And the beauty of pea plant was, uh, you know, it, it contains a uh, male part, which is the anther, uh, which contributes the pollen grain, uh, which acts just like sperm cells in, in, uh, in, 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 in humans or other uh, animals. And, you know, these anthers are present here. They are within the same flower. And these anthers, they are like sac, like structure within them, a powdery uh, material is present and these, this powder is basically uh, making up all these pollen grains, okay, which contain the sperm nucleus. Together, the male part is called stamen, the complete anthers plus this, this, uh, Enter plus Abdullah, what do we call this filament? Uh, yes, sir, filament. So that is collectively called stamen. And then the female part is this ovary. You can see here where the oocyte or egg cell is. And then this is the point where the pollen grains, they get released and they go they fall on the stigma and they grow through this tube. They go inside and they fertilize the female cell. And the new baby seed starts developing, okay? Another interesting thing was what Mendel did because he was interested in uh, understanding different traits or characters, okay? Uh, he already could see variation in his lawn. Uh, in his lawn, the church, uh, he could see different colors of flower colors, purple, white, you know, uh, tall pea plants versus dwarf. The seed shapes were, you know, different wrinkled versus uh, spherical or round. So he could gather all this variation. But what determined his success was that he could crossbreed. Here, when you have pollens coming from same flower, going to the stigma of same flower, we call this phenomena self-pollination. Okay? self-pollination but what he came up he said okay i can remove the male parts and keep the female i can bring in the pollens from purple throw them here on the stigma we call this kind of experiment cross pollination 
Sir, could you please repeat cross pollination? Cross pollination is when you have sperm cells, the the pollen grains from one plant, totally different trait, like purple here, to a different one, a white. This is cross pollination. And cell phase when purple pollens fall on the stigma of the same flower. This is cell within itself. Clear? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, using this, you know, this is an efficient experimental system for a geneticist. Why? You have variation in the form of flower color, you have variation in the form of seed shape. So we had round versus wrinkled seed plants. He had height as a character, tall versus dwarf. He had flower color, for example, purple versus white. He had, you know, um, seven different traits seed shape height flower color etc so there were seven different traits we are going to soon see this is all this is what this is variation within the same species and but before he moved on with his experiment he said okay first i'll see if my Pea plants, they are truly bred or they are pure. This is a very important concept. We call them pure lines or true breeding lines when there is no variation. Okay? A pure line purple will be one which always produce purple, no whites, and a pure line white will be, which always produces white flowers. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So what he did, he chose a pea plant with round seeds. He grew round seeds generation after generation you know he grew a seed a pea plant came out it he harvested the seeds he saw them everything is round he's again planted them in soil again new plants came in he harvested the seeds everything is round he went generation after generation and what he discovered that okay the rounds are pure or true bred round in as compared to rounds he also had wrinkled and what he did he collected wrinkled seeds he grew them and generation after generation he found wrinkled is also true breeding or pure line now you should know round or wrinkled these are what phenotypes appearance tall and dwarf these are two different phenotypes height is the character but tallness and dwarfness are the traits the phenotypes so what it did next was he said okay I have no wrinkled seed ever coming in in round or no round coming in wrinkled. So it means my wrinkled or round, they are pure breeding lines or true breeding lines. Now I can do an experiment. This experiment is called, which he did now where he proved its true breeding, this is your control experiment. Control experiment means 
which is going to be used as a reference. Okay, always. Now, let's do the experiment. What he did, he took round seeds, round pea plant. Okay, this is the experiment he did. He took flower of, you know, the round and the other one he took wrinkled he wrinkled flower he took the pollens and threw it on the wrinkled plant flower okay this is a cross cross pollination round cross to wrinkled what he discovered in progeny everything was wrong this one round cross to wrinkle the generation and this generation is called f1 everything is round the first conclusion here is that wrinkle disappeared wrinkle there's not a single wrinkled seed in the F1 generation. Everything disappeared. Round is present. So round is dominant. He named round as dominant because it masked the wrinkle. Wrinkle completely disappeared in the F1. So he named round trait as dominant. What he did next, he self-crossed F1 rounds. This arrow, this round arrow means F1 round is going to be self-pollinated now. What he saw next was, so F1 round, in the next generation, which we call F2, he saw rounds, but he saw wrinkled as well. Look at here. So you have some wrinkle coming up. Some wrinkle coming up which are exactly similar to the original parent. They are exactly, they had no loss. I'm sorry. Sorry, way. So, what he discovered that you know the wrinkle trait it came back in the F two, and there is no loss in the, you know, wrinkle trait. They exactly look like original wrinkle pairing. What he did next was that he counted, and. He counted how many wrinkled seeds I have, how many rounds I have, and what he discovered that there is, there were this much number of rounds and this much wrinkle. And when he calculated the ratio, it was 2.96 ratio one, round versus wrinkle. And what he did, he said, okay, in F1, round mask, the wrinkle, we already said complete disappearance of wrinkle in F1 and round was named as dominant. When in wrinkle was named as recessive trait, the one which disappears 
in F1 is a recessive trait. And what Mendel also postulated, he said round is actually completely dominant, complete dominance. Complete dominance means there is no, not even a single wrinkle in the F1. So he termed the two terms dominant and recessive. So wrinkled is recessive trait, round is dominant. He did this such an experiment with different traits. For example, purple versus white flower color. In F2, similarly, he, what he did, he took, for example, purple, crossed with white pea plants. In F1, he got everything purple, which means purple is dominant, white is recessive. This F1 was self-pollinated. And what he found that there was 705 purples and 224 white flowered plants. And the ratio he calculated was 224. So 705 divided by 224, it roughly came down to 3.515 ratio one. Then another trait, tallness versus dwarf, same story. Tall was dominant in F1. You self cross the F1, and what you discover that in F2, there was three to one ratio between tall versus dwarf. Okay? So when we are talking about round versus wrinkled, this is a very important point round versus wrinkled, or purple versus white or tall versus dwarf, three is to one is basically phenotypic ratio. These are appearances. Tall, dwarf, round, wrinkled, purple, white. This is appearance. This is the phenotype. So three is to one is the F2 phenotypic ratio. Three is to one is F2 phenotypic ratio. This is very important concept. What we have learned so far, dominance, complete dominance, recessive, or phenotypic ratio, three is to one, F2 phenotypic ratio. Now, what he did, so up to here we were in F2, what he did, he randomly selected F2 plants. Let's say you take 100 plants, F2, in which you take, you know, rounds, you take wrinkled, round, wrinkled, you know, you, these are F2, the ones which gave you three to one ratio. You took 100 random plants out of this. And what you did, you grew them independently self-pollination there self-pollination for example i have used animation here wrinkled you grow you grow rounds you know you kept growing these 100 plants or 200 or 500 what mendel discovered was that out of his random selection there were some plants which were pure or true breeding which gave you round there were some which gave you wrinkled round so wrinkled gave always wrinkled round gave always round but there were quite a significant number of plants which gave you this mix of population when you grew round it gave you three is to one round wrinkle. This one also gave you three is to one round wrinkle. 
So what this ratio was one round pure, one wrinkled pure, and two impures. Out of 100, for example, you will get 25 pure rounds, 25 wrinkled, and 50 impures. And the ratio is when you divide everything to calculate the ratio, it will be 1, 1, 2. Or we write it like this 1 ratio 2 ratio 1. So when he got these numbers, how many numbers he has now? Sorry. He has F2, phenotypic ratio, which was 3 is to 1. And now he has this new ratio, which is, let's call this F3, 1 is to 2 is to 1. And uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you please uh, explain ke how we got this F2 phenotypic ratio, 3 ratio 1? When you you were on the, this slide. Yes, sir. When you self-crossed F1 round, not this one. If you self-cross this one, this will always give you round. This is pure breeding. But F1, which was result of this crossed with this one, this round crossed to wrinkle, okay? Yes. So in the F1, you got rounds, all rounds. When you self-cross this, self-pollination, you got this three to one phenotypic ratio. Okay. Out of 100, let's say 75 were rounds and 25 were wrinkle. wrinkle. Clear? Yes, sir. से राउंड के स्टिग्मा पे जाता है ये सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन और क्रॉस है जब आप कंसीडर दिस वन राउंड एंड दिस वन रिंकल सो अगर यू आप क्रॉस करते हो तो ये क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन है सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन का मतलब है एफ वन का ही पोलन एफ वन के ही स्टिग्मा पे क्लियर जी सर सो नाउ व्हाट मेंडल डेड ही सेड ओके लेट्स सी हाउ दिस न how these numbers are possible? Sir, I think Mariam has a question as well. G Mariam? Uh, sir, the, uh, the uh, ratio that we talked about, 1 ratio, 3 ratio, 1, uh, sorry, 1 ratio, 2 ratio, 1, the uh, one that came after crossing the F2 plants, uh, sorry, seeds. Uh, sir, usme, uh, jo round wale hai, do they only produce, some of them only produce a mixture of round and wrinkled or the, wrink, uh, or the wrinkled to are impure? Very good question. No, only the round ones produced, not the wrinkle. Wrinkle did not produce any round. The rounds are producing wrinkle. Oh, okay. Two impures are rounds. Only one impure in the one ratio, two ratio, one is round. So here, if I write down the phenotypes, this is pure round. This is two impure rounds and one ring. So wrinkled was always pure. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's look at what Mendel did and how he solved this enigma. Mendel postulated that 
okay i have round with wrinkle in f1 all round round dominant and recessive uh, wrinkle was recessive when i self crossed f1 round i got you know 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio in the f2 he postulated that the factors and the first time somebody used name factor somebody postulated hypothesized that there is some physical basis of traits or characters he said each you know the character is actually controlled by specific factor and these factors they exist in pairs okay and he said i will use for round trade for for the dominant trade whether it is round whether it is tallness whether it is uh, purple color or yellow color whatever the one which is dominant i'm going to use capital letters he said and he said for round i use let's say rr -R, because he postulated character round is controlled by a factor which exists in pair so this is a pair of r and he said the recessive one will be the one which got dominant uh, which got dominated or masked is smaller. The next thing he said, he said, from parents, these are the parents, okay, from parents to the offsprings, the progeny, only parents can contribute half of the factor, which means this parent will contribute only a half of the factor. This, either this one or this one, or this one can contribute this or this one and in the f1 now since this parent contributed capital r this parent contributed small r this will be capital r small r but since this is dominant so capital r dominates and you don't see small r phenotype and we have all rounds so f1 is what is f1 now f1 is capital r small r now once you self pollinate f1 self pollination will be what self pollination will be this parent within itself now in the f2 only half of the factor can be contributed now what are those two half factors either this one or this one and this parent this one or this one now in the f2 and let's draw that This one, capital R, this one, small r, this one, these are possibilities. So if this one pollinates this one, you will get capital R, capital R. If this one pollinates this one, if this one goes, it's... So, how many rounds will be there? Can someone calculate? three because this stands for round in f2 anyone with double r's double r was round capital r small r is also round so three rounds and one wrinkle so that's why in f2 you see three ratio one phenotypic ratio we call them phenotype because we are just observing their phenotype just based on their appearance 
we are concluding three rounds, one ranker. But Mendel postulated that the underlying basis, the factors, the ones which are controlling is actually, this is what is happening. Clear, Yantak? Okay. Yeah? Yes. What he did, I already drew, so these letters are coming now, you see. And what Mendel said, he said, okay, I have three ratio one, but underneath three ratio one, I also got one ratio two ratio one, okay, in the F3. And he could very easily explain. He said, okay, when I randomly select these people, from F2, 100 seeds, I may be having this one, I may be having this one, or I may be having this one. Now, if I have capital R, capital R from F2, and I self-pollinate, I will get all rounds, because 50%, only one factor can be contributed by a parent. If I have these ones, head R, R, I will get threes to one ratio, no? Because this is like F1. And if I get small r, small r, cross to small r, small r, it will always be wrinkled. So that's why I can get one ratio, two impures. These are impure rounds and one pure wrinkle and one pure round. After his experiment, he coined few terminologies, which are very important for you to understand. He said already, which we have learned, dominant, recessive. Dominant was capital R and small r is recessive. Dominant is one which dominates in F1 which masks the other phenotype. And recessive is one which gets dominated in F1, which disappears in F1, and only comes back in F2 if you self-cross F1. So these ones <coughs> were called genotype. When we gave capital R, capital R, we are actually giving, we are actually, with these notations, we are giving genotype of round trait or round character. And small r, small r is the genotype of wrinkle. Phenotype was what? Phenotype was wrinkle. Wrinkle is phenotype. Round is Phenotype. But, sorry, what happened? But these round and wrinkled phenotypes, they are controlled by genotypes, which are the, these ones. Capital R, capital R is pure breeding, true breeding, round. Small, small r. So the small r, small r is the genotype for true breeding drinker. And capital R, small r is the genotype of F1 round. And when you have two different alleles like capital R and small r existing together in a cell, we call this heterozygote. What is heterozygous? So heterozygous, heterozygous or heterozygote is when two different alleles exist together in a cell. Okay. And, oh, I was uh, doing it homework. Heterozygous, this one is heterozygous. Okay. And homozygous is 
when you have two alleles, same alleles existing together. Homozygous here is capital R, capital R, or small r, small r. These are homozygous or homozygous. Now, can you predict if I give you an example, if I give you a question, can you uh, solve it right now? So I give you F1 round, okay? I give you F1 round and you are going to cross it with pure breeding wrinkled. All of you, it's a question for you to solve in next two minutes. It's doable in two minutes. F1 round, cross it with pure breeding wrinkled. What ratio do you get in progeny? Round versus wrinkle? Sir, 50-50. Agar F1 may like, we have like the mixture of wrinkled and round in F1. Yeah. Then we, if we like match it with wrinkle, so we'll get 50-50. Very good. We will get 50-50 because, and that's what Mandel did. Mandel did, did all these crosses. Mandel did all these uh, you know, predictions. That's how he proved himself right. So what he did, he took F1 round, crossed with wrinkle, and he said, I'll get 50-50. Why? Because F1 round was capital R, small r, cross with wrinkle is pure breeding always. In F1, we will get, so we can draw here, the checkerboard or Punnett scale like this. Wrinkle can contribute one factor, this one, or the other, this one. F1 round can contribute this one or smaller because it is heterozygous. F1 round is heterozygous. Now, the result of pollination will be this one, this one, smaller, smaller, or this small r, small r, so 50 50. One ratio one. And this, whenever you cross F1, this is a very important concept again. Whenever you cross F1 heterozygous with homozygous recessive parent, I repeat, whenever you cross F1 heterozygous plants with homozygous recessive parent, this cross is called test cross. For example, F1, we didn't do it, we'll soon do it. So he crossed yellow versus green in his seven traits he studied. So yellow was, pure breeding yellow was capital Y, capital Y. And green was recessive small y, small y. And when he crossed, you know, capital Y with, which means yellow with green, he got F1 heterozygous, which was like this. You cross it with homozygous recessive parent, you get 50% green, 50% yellow, a test cross, okay? Back cross is when you cross F1 with either of the two parents. That is back cross. But test cross is specifically when you cross it with homozygous recessive parents. So Mendel proved him that factors, they exist in pairs. And when two parents mate, each parent can only contribute one factor, half of the factor of 50%. And these factors, they segregate to the next generation without any specific bias. Here, if we go back to the previous slide, this one, if you had F1, capital R, small r, capital R, small r, so there's no specific preference 
they each allele small r is an allele capital r is an allele it has equal probability to be passed on to the next generation so what mendel said that factors exist in pairs and when they are passed on to the next progeny they segregate randomly with equal probability okay this was the first law of mendelian genetics or you know we call ya ibad ibad ibadat ji puche questions illusion hai aap keh rahe hain ki probability equal hai lekin wo to heterozygous dominant hai wo homozygous pure breed to nahi na hai to phir usme recessive allele bhi to hai jaise jo small r hai small r hai wo to pura hai na aur jo dominant hai lekin usme bhi to recessive show ho raha hai तो वो आगे जनरेशन में जाके शो होगा तो इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि डोमिनेंट की प्रोबेबिलिटी कम हो जाएगी नो लुक वी सॉ हेड वाइड स्क्रीन ओके लेट्स सॉल्व इट हियर दीज आर बेसिकली द सेम एंड ट्रेड्स व्हिच ही एनालाइज पर्पल वर्सेस वाइट एंड यू नो He clearly saw completely dominant traits: round versus wrinkled, and yellow versus green, or purple versus white, etc. Let me go to the answer if I find some white spaces. Uh, I have used all the white spaces. Yeah, on this one, let's see. Look, we have. pure breeding now each allele or factor has equal probability this one can go with this one after pollination this one with this one or uh this one with this one and this one with this one okay we have wrinkled it will also become eventually you look this one what you get through similar thing if you have now this f1 you have two alleles this one and when i draw this punnett scale this is what actually capital r this one small r this one and there is an equal probability when this parent is passing on these either of the two alleles there is no preference from the parent that i would like to give this one or this one did you get my point now ke baad hai ji sir lekin isme यही है ना कि जो दो है वो हेट्रोजाइगस डोमिनेंट है नहीं हेट्रोजाइगस डोमिनेंट नहीं है हेट्रोजाइगस इज कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ द टू डिफरेंट अलील्स एग्जिस्टिंग टुगेदर वी कॉल हेट्रोजाइगस एंड डोमिनेंट अलील इज कैपिटल आर हम सर जब अब ये इसको कंप्लीट करेंगे स्क्वायर को तो ए हमारे पास कैपिटल आर आएगा दिस वन दिस वन and this one this is now f2 sir so, phenotype abhi yahan pe to 3 ratio 1 mein hai na probability yeah. jo aapne cross cross karaya hai jisme aapne f1 aur recessive ko cross karwaya hai usme equal probability aati hai na because we have f1 heterozygous crossed with this one in the test cross you are talking about ji so yahan pe वो इसलिए 50 50 आती है कि सेग्रीगेशन इक्वल है ये आ जाएगा अलील या ये पेरेंट ये कर सकता है कंट्रीब्यूट दिस वन इज ऑल डजेंट मैटर ये जाए या ये जाए तो इसमें यू हैव नाउ दिस वन और दीज टू सो वी गेट दिस और 
तो ये इक्वल प्रोबेबिलिटी है ना कि इधर ये जाएगा या ये है दे आर सेग्रीगेटिंग इंडिपेंडेंटली ठीक है 